Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be going over the new Henry Long Ranger. So these rifles are relatively new. I think they actually just hit the streets in July. This is one of the first ones out. I've been shooting it a good bit. Those who follow me on Facebook and Instagram have certainly seen that. And uh, what we're going to do today is a few things. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to do an accuracy test because that's what folks always want to know about when it comes to rifles, particularly ones chambered in 308. So we're going to do that. Then we're also going to discuss some of the sort of pros and cons of it. After we discuss the features of it, we'll go into that in detail and, and sort of uh, what I think of the current setup and maybe some ways that it could be improved, if you will. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, but right now, we'll let the dogs check it out and then go back out to the range and check out the accuracy. All right, now we're gonna test the accuracy of this rifle, at least to the best of our abilities. Uh, we have a few different rounds that we're gonna run through it. Uh, target down range at 100 yards. And uh, the rest we have is a CTK precision rest. Uh, four round groups I'm gonna shoot, simply because it's a four round mag, so I suppose that works. Uh, first up, ammunition wise, we're gonna have the uh, 300, 308, rather, uh, 178 grain Amex remanufactured ammo from Freedom Munitions. Um, since you guys will probably ask on this on the uh, optic for the optic, I should say, we have the 2.5 by 10 uh, Trigicon scope on there, and then we have some worn rings. These are high rings due to the objective lens size. Um, most of the time, you'll probably be able to get away with medium rings here. So, uh, we'll load it up and start uh, sending some rounds down range if I can actually do it. Yeah. There we go. Just to let you know, one thing I noticed was this particular round and this particular gun, it's hard to unlock that bolt. You'll see the other rounds, it's not the case. I'm gonna go slide my target over um, because I have some soybeans obstructed. All right, we moved the target over so I can actually see the whole thing now, not just the center of it. And uh, we'll put up next some uh, Gorilla ammunition. Uh, this stuff is loaded with this 175 grain, uh, I believe Sierra, hold on. Yep, Sierra Match King bullets. Very, very consistently accurate stuff in a lot of different guns that I own. But, you know, every gun's different, so we'll see. Get it rocking. I promise you the mag's not that hard to insert. I just uh, am a little bit slow today, I think. There you go. All right, let's get to it. We've had pretty good wind all day and uh, it's definitely picking up.
right? So as you saw there, uh, if you actually run the lever gun with some, uh, some man strength, it does eject. It's just me being dainty with it. So uh, up next, there's some Federal gold medal match. Again, a lot of people think this stuff's sort of the standard. Uh, it's going to be 175 grand again. Um, but every uh, manufacturer, of course, loads their ammo differently. So we'll see how this load performs versus the Gorilla, which uses the same bullet. So slide that over. The wind's nasty, guys. I'm sure you guys can hear it. This is a real world field test here. Let's go check it out. Well, as you can see around me, we certainly have some wind and the lights going down, so I apologize about that. But um, interesting results that you guys saw that I didn't see from behind the scope here. So first up was the Freedom Munitions Group. I was over here in the middle. And right there, you're getting two and a quarter inches with that group. Then we shot the um, next group, which was the Gorilla Munitions. And I don't know what's going on here, guys. Honestly, to tell you the truth, either A, it shot lights out, or B, I missed the target on some of these. It looks like it's all the same hole. Um, so when I was behind the scope, what I thought was happening was, from my distance, I thought it was just hitting in the black and I couldn't see the impacts. But, as you can see, I mean, there's no point in measuring it. It's the same hole. It looks like there's three different holes in there, uh, at least bullet holes that I can see. So, awesome. Um, and then of course we had the federal gold medal match up here and, uh, that one shot right at one and a half inches. So one and a half inches with the gold medal match federal. Certainly that accuracy was pretty good. Not a whole lot to complain about. I'm not sure I could do that, uh, four shots into one whole thing again, but what that comes from primarily of course is going to be the barrel. So we have a 20 inch barrel on here. They call it a mil spec steel. So I'm assuming it's 4150 uh, steel. It has a one in 10 twist rate on it and it's a sporter profile. It's free floated as well. Uh, so if you actually come down here, you can actually move the barrel. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but it is free floated from the handguard. Um, but what I wanted to point out there was the sporter profile. I'm a huge fan of that. It's uh, very similar for those of you guys who are into ARs and stuff like that of the like Bravo Company enhanced lightweight versions or uh, the Ballistic Advantage Hanson profiles or the Facts and Firearms Gunner profiles, any of those. So it's going to be thicker back here towards the chamber and then it sort of tapers out. So what that gives you is a lot of rigidity back here, but out on the end of the rifle, uh, which obviously is the hardest to control when you have weight out there, um, it stays nice and lightweight, which makes it sort of handy and it contributes to the weight of the rifle. Uh, here with no scope and uh, the Skinner um, mounts on here, this rifle weighs in at six pounds and 13 ounces on my scale. So relatively lightweight for a 308 hunting rifle, for sure. And uh, that accuracy, of course, speaks for itself. So even with uh, the other loads, it was still getting decent groups. Um, so the barrel, obviously, is going to be the number one contributor to that. Moving back, we do have walnut handguards as well as the walnut stock, and this is American walnut. It's beautifully checkered. Really, the checkering is, is flawless all the way around. It's perfect and, of course, gives you a good grip there on the handguard when you're firing. You're not going to slip off or anything like that. You can see the barrel has the uh, caliber marking in there. They also come in uh, 223 and uh, 243, I believe. And up front, we have our um, sling swivel here. There's also one on the stock that we'll show you here a little bit later on, but you can also mount a bipod on there. And uh, I posted some pictures on Facebook and Instagram of me doing just that. And folks kind of had an aneurysm, which I sort of do that to troll the trolls in a way. But in all reality, guys, if we're talking about a 308 caliber rifle, having the ability to mount that bipod on there for practical accuracy once you get out beyond three, 400 yards is important. It's huge. Uh, stability is, is what you need to hit at that distance. And obviously you guys saw the accuracy of this rifle is capable of doing it. So um, from a performance, a real world performance standpoint, it's gonna aid you if you don't have a bag or something like that to rest on. So I know people are laughing at it, but reality, if you wanna hit your targets, it's certainly gonna help.
continuing to move back, we do have an aluminum receiver here. However, the uh, barrel lockup as well as the bolt are all steel. So we'll get to that a little bit more here in just a second, but it's an aluminum receiver with a matte black finish. So it's not going to shine or give you away in a hunting scenario or anything like that. Um, you can see the lever here is has the uh, small ring. So some of the Henry's, of course, have the large ring. I personally prefer the small ring. I'm probably one of the few that does. I think the large ring, I don't know, it just it feels like I have to travel too far to hit it. But I know a lot of folks like the large ring as well, so I suppose it's user preference at that point. And uh, flipping it over, we do have a detachable box magazine in 308 and uh, 243. There's four rounds in 223. You're going to get five rounds out of there. The uh, mag button is steel. The magazine itself is all steel as well. And like I mentioned, of course, the barrel extension as well as where the bolt goes in. All steel, just the aluminum receiver there. The receiver is drilled in top to accept these Skinner sight bases, and uh, these do come with the rifle, so no need to go out and purchase them separately. They come with it, they'll be in your box, and you can add any Weaver or 1930 or Picatinny uh, style scope bases there that you want. Um, what I went with here, uh, you guys can see, is the Trigicon 2.5 to 10. This has obviously a large uh, objective lens, so I had to go with medium height rings um, just to get the clearance for the objective. But for a lot of scopes, I would imagine you could go with the uh, low rings and get a little bit better cheek weld. So I was a little higher than I would want to be. However, um, not a big deal at all. It still was able to get hits as you guys saw without issue. The bolt on the rifle is the big departure from what we've seen with Henry rifles in the past and just sort of the operating system of it. So it's a six lug bolt. And if I kind of go like that, you'll be able to see it a little bit better there. But you can see those lugs on there kind of look similar to a lot of bolt action rifles. And there's a reason for that. Function wise, this really is a bolt action rifle that is actuated from a lever, if that makes sense. So the reason I say that is the lockup is very similar to a lot of bolt action rifles that you see the way it locks up into the chamber. What that's going to give you is very good accuracy, as we saw so far. So um, I know a lot of people out there would say lever guns aren't as accurate as bolt guns. In general, I would say that's true. However, this rifle, like I mentioned, is functioning as a bolt gun the way the lockup is in the barrel, which is really uh, the parts that add to accuracy more than anything else. So uh, there's a few things. It does have a little sort of cam on there, a little wheel. And when you actually initially unlock it right there, you can feel the bolt unlocking. And then from there, it's super smooth. And that's because of that gear that's on there. If you look at the bottom here on our bolt, you can see those little gear notches and that gear is what drives it home. I pulled it out to get some pictures of it so you guys can get a better idea of exactly how it works and how it functions. Um, and also put it back together just to inspect the parts if nothing else. But um, very, very smooth. And I know a lot of people are going to make the comparison to the Browning rifle. Uh, that is a lever gun that also fires rifle cartridges and that one has some disadvantages over this one, in my opinion, in that um, the trigger itself is nowhere near as good. This one here breaks right about four pounds and is very short, so we'll try to just kind of bring it up here so you guys can see. So there's just a little bit of play right here. And then short, crisp pull. Um, very good, leads to good accuracy. No doubt about it. And uh, that's definitely one of the bigger advantages. Uh, one thing that I know folks will ask if I don't uh, bring it up is about the magazine. So four rounds here, standard capacity. They want to know, can you add a longer mag? Well, right now with this current design, you can't. And here's why. When you throw the lever all the way up, you can see there it would prevent any longer uh, magazine. Uh, it would interfere with it. So right now, as it stands, the answer is no. Like the other Henry's, this one has the transfer bar safety here in the hammer, meaning that if the lever isn't completely down, you cannot pull the trigger, it will not engage, and even if it did, a transfer bar would prevent it from actually igniting the round. So there's no uh, external safeties that you have to manipulate, you just run the lever and go. I personally prefer that on a lever gun, without question, there's simply no need, in my opinion, uh, for safety or anything else to have a manual safety on a lever gun. Just like the foreign, the stock is made from some beautiful American walnut. You can see it has a check ring here where your hands are going to be to give you a good positive grip on there. And really, the wines in the wood just look great. The finish is great. Any sort of nicks that you may see in there, those are from my doing. And it also has on the back here this uh, probably about half inch thick rubber butt pad that will aid in uh, soaking up the recoil. Again, not really a big thing in 308. It will allow you to get back on target a little bit faster, though, than if you had like a one of the brass ones or something that they have on some of their other smaller caliber lever guns. And of course, back here, we do have that sling swivel that we talked about earlier. Now, 
a comb height. That's something I sort of alluded to a little bit earlier that if you uh, wanted to run this rifle with uh, low rings, it's probably perfect. It's probably actually ideal and you'll have a very natural cheek weld. If you're gonna use medium or high, you may want to use something to build it up. Um, that's for out in the field. Of course, it's plenty usable without it if you do that, but from some, someone who spent a lot of time in the prone behind some rifles in my day, um, I would personally build it up if I was going to use high or even medium height silk rings. Mm. Before going any further, we always want to get into the price point. I believe right now, as of uh, what is this, November 2016, the MSRP on these is $1,015. Uh, the place I've seen them on the street the most is going to be Cabela's. I'll put a link down in the video description below. They're going for $950 over there, I believe, shipped to your local Cabela's. Um, so again, we'll put the link in the video description. But it's not a super cheap rifle, but there certainly are more expensive ones out there as well. So um, definitely a lot of pros to it. Number one, of course, we saw the accuracy. The lever is extremely smooth. The trigger is very good for a rifle of this type, uh, but stock's nice. The wood's beautiful. Um, I like the barrel profile. I talked about the weight of it's really good as well, coming in under seven pounds. So those are the pros. Um, let's talk about a couple cons or something that I found if we have a Gen 1 or Gen 2 improvement, if you will. So here on the receiver, the way the sights are, uh, they're a little bit close together. Now, the problem I found with that is that certain scopes worked well. So I have a few loopholes and a few Trigicon scopes. All of those worked without issue. But the problem is other scopes, simply the way the turrets are designed, you can't get them far enough back, um, or far enough forward rather, I should say, um, to get good eye relief with them the way they're set up. So it's really gonna depend on the turret location of your scope. So uh, like I said, every loophole scope I have worked and every Trigicon scope I have worked, I'm sure there are others. And if you guys have these rifles, post down below in the comment section and let folks know what works and um, what doesn't work. But for instance, one that didn't work that I use all the time here is the Primary Arms 4x14 um, ACSS scope. That one would not work. I couldn't get the right eye relief. And that's simply due to the fact that these um, sight bases are too close together for that to work and get the right eye relief. So my recommendation out there, Henry, if you're listening, <laughs> is gonna be to move that forward a little bit on the receiver if it's possible. So I don't know what kind of engineering issues there would be with that. Um, if not, hey, we'll just have to look around and make sure we get the scope that fits the rifle. So not a huge deal. Uh, the second one would be the uh, ejector tension. So um, throughout the review, I think I, you guys actually saw it in the accuracy testing. I actually shot that about a month ago, so I'm not 100% sure what happened there. I remember it, but I don't remember all the details. But one thing I found is that certain cartridges, well, number one, if you run it like a man, every single one of them comes out. But sometimes when you're trying to focus on accuracy and things like that, you're not running as hard as you should. And the case would just flip around in there. Um, just do the extractor tension. So the fix for that that I found that worked perfectly fine was just to pull the bolt out and I pulled the uh, ejector and lubricated, clean and lubricated it and I never had the issue once again from the factory I did have the issue. So I don't know if maybe they're just coming not lubricated but if they're not lubricate them and if not just a little bit more spring tension will probably be perfect. Um, I know some folks have clamored for sights. I don't really see that as a need because most folks are going to run this rifle with a scope. So I mean, I don't know. That's up to customer demand out there. If you guys have an opinion on that, by all means, post below in the comments. I'm sure Henry will read them. Uh, so you guys can do that. And uh, really, the only other thing I want, me personally, I want a threaded barrel, of course. Suppressors are going more and more, are becoming more and more common, I should say. And the ability, if you're out hunting, particularly hog hunting, which has become very popular, uh, to use that suppressor can give you some serious advantages. For instance, when I shoot hogs and I don't have a suppressor on, uh, you generally only get one and the rest of them scatter. If you have a suppressor on there, you're going to get two or three before they figure out what's going on as the other guys are dropping around them. So that can be a huge advantage in the field. So that's certainly a nice thing. I'm sure Henry's gotten that request a few times. But all in all, I'm not dogging the rifle at all. I'm just kind of kind of giving you guys my opinion of what I found so far. I would definitely get it again. Uh, let's put it that way. I think the finish is awesome. The trigger's good, like we talked about, good accuracy. And it's just fun to be able to shoot at distance with a lever gun. Lever guns are fun in any caliber. And uh, in 308, they become even more fun. So that's about it, guys. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, you can always post down below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, which generally speaking is the easiest way and best way to get in touch with me. Um, but that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. And we'll see you guys in the next video.